All right, if you can believe it, it's the last one. Combined load, so we're just going to throw everything together here. It's just a big mush pile. All right, so we've learned how to determine a stress distribution. <laughs> Stress distribution caused by axial forces, shear forces, bending moments, torsional moments, pressure in a vessel. What do we do if we got a bunch of these all happening at the same time? Uh, <laughs> as our little friend tells us, we add them together. So that's the joy of superposition. It just matter once you know how to do all those other ones, you're just uh, you're just adding together when we um, when we solve them. So to review the whole process, uh, if we have a combined loading, uh, something that has you know different kinds of loads, say a torsional moment and a normal force, uh, we're going to divide the body uh, by the method of sections. We're going to find the resultant force and moment at the section that we're interested in, uh, and particularly ar around uh, or through the centroidal centroidal axis. Uh, we're going to divide those resultants into components so that we get a normal uh, stress, a torsional stress, right? Those are our axial um, stresses and moments. And then we're going to have a shear um, force and we're going to have a bending moment. Those are our transverse uh, forces and moments. Those are the four steps we've taken along the way, right? And then we're going to find the stresses associated with each force, uh, including any pressure, pressure vessel stresses. Um, and then we're going to do what the little guy told us to do. <laughs> <All right. laughs> he, is, he has a potty mouth. you got to watch him. All right, so these are all uh, our formulas. Um, these are how we find these different uh, things. So. You know, we're, we're going to need more than this, but this is our this is our base here, right? We've got our normal force here, our shear force, uh, our banding moment, and our torsional moment. And there's some small print, right? But it's not you know it's not a huge amount of small print. You want to make sure we've got linear relationships. In other words, that we're in the uh, the elastic region for our material. Uh, if we have um, a really large load, it might significantly change the geometry. Like if our, you know, we're figuring out a member and it's bending like that, that's going to change the way that um, those stresses work. Uh, we're going to make sure we check our assumptions. You know, say we're using the uh, transverse shear. Uh, there are a lot of assumptions in there. Um, and then we've got to have, you know, a clear conscience. <laughs> move forward in this world all right so that's that's our starting point okay now let's do a problem so that's really all that left there's not there's nothing new here we already know the principle of superposition we're just going to start adding stuff together so here's our problem we've got a 15 pound king kong so he's a he's a tiny little little monkey um so our fey ray and our uh Tiny airplanes are also, you know, respectively smaller. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't matter, right? We don't care. All of that that monkey, he's just 15 pounds to us. He's just a force. He's just a vector. Uh, and we want to know the state of stress right here, and we want to know the state of stress right there at B and C. And so that's what we're going to find out. So first, we want to find the resultant force. Um, around the centroidal axis here, okay? So we're gonna pick the centroid of this and we're gonna figure out, okay, what kind of normal force do I have? What kind of torsional force? What kind of bending force? What kind of transverse force? Uh, bending moment, rather. So potentially we can find four components, right? Shear force, torsional moment, bending moment, and transverse force. A transverse shear force okay so what is the resultant normal force at the plane BC right there that's your first question pause this is easier than you think <laughs> think about a moment of sections right 
we're ignoring the weight of this building, which uh, is questionable. Second question, what is the resultant moment around the centroidal axis? And then about that moment, is this moment a bending moment, a torsional moment, or a combination of the two? So now we normally divide the resultant force into a shear and a normal force, okay, and the moment into a torsion and a bending moment. But you may have figured out that what we have here is a pure normal force, right? It's directly in the axis direction, and it's far enough away from this plane that we can just treat that as being spread evenly around the whole, um, uh, around that whole BC section, okay? So it's a little off to the side, but generally in a situation like this, if we're far from the point of application, it's going to be evenly spread out. We started way back at the beginning of class with that idea. Uh, and basically we have a pure bending moment too, right? The axis that this is acting around is a transverse axis. And so it's going to tend to bend this building uh, in that direction, right? Uh, and so we don't have a torsional moment and we don't have a shear force here. And so that's going to make this a little bit easier for us because we've got limited. And that normal force is 15 pounds and I hope you all figured this one out too. And the moment is 5 inches times that 15 pounds, so 75 pound inches. So now we find the stress distributions on this plane here because we want to know what our stresses are at B and C. The stress, normal stress, like I said, is going to be evenly spread through this area because we're relatively far from the point of application. So we just use P over A, okay? Uh, and that's 15 pounds over the area of the cross section. So we have a uniform stress of 0.375 PSI in that plane. And that's a compressive stress, right? Because it's being pressed down, that monkey is pressing down on it. Now we have a bending stress here. That bending stress is going to vary, right? It's going to be compressive on this side. It's going to be tensile on this side. And it's going to vary linearly um, from the centroidal axis, right? That's what we know about a bending moment. Uh, and so we use our bending equation. Um, our C here is the largest distance between the centroidal axis uh, and the edge of the member, right? M is our moment. I is our moment of inertia for this surface area. And again, the, the, the length that is um, I guess perpendicular to the centroidal axis here. This is the axis of rotation. This is the one that's H because this one matters more because we're going to have to compress a bunch of stuff here and expand a bunch of stuff here. So H matters a lot more. So that's the one that we take to the third power, right? Because that's 10 inches. Four inches is our thickness and that's a B. Uh, and we find that the maximum uh, bending stress is 1.125 PSI. Okay, the maximum stress at bending occurs both at B and C, but this is compressive and this is tensile. So now take another, uh, think about those forces, draw a little picture for yourself and get a sense of which is going to have the highest magnitude stress? 
we've got a compressive normal stress at BC, and then we've got a bending stress um, that is both compressive and tensile. And we'll move on. Now we use our superposition powers, right? <laughs> we don't have superpowers. I can't fly, but I can add things together. I think that's, that's pretty close. <laughs> so at C, they're both compressive, right? So they're going to add. So that's going to be where we get a, the largest magnitude because they're going to, they're both compressive forces. Um, they're going to combine with each other and be even more compressive. Uh, at point B, we're combining a tensile force with a compressive force, right? Uh, and so we're going to end up with a smaller magnitude force that ultimately is positive because that bending uh, stress is higher than the normal stress. All right. And if we wanted to know, well, is this building going to hold up to, uh, to King Kong jumping up and down when he gets angry, we would need to take these values and say, oh, okay, We've got a compressive force that's this big. What, is our, what can our material withstand, right? Is it able to withstand that? We've got a tensile stress that's this big. Uh, what kind of tensile force can our uh, material uh, deal with? And that's why we study depth pods. So we know <laughs> what, what King Kong can climb on and what he can't. Let him know. We don't want to get hurt. All right. So. We found stresses at individual points. We also could have drawn these as summed over the entire distribution. The axial stress is normal, or is uniform rather, um, over the whole section. Uh, the bending stress is zero at the axis, but increases linearly on each side. And then we can add those together, right? So we can add this whole field to this whole field and we find the combined load. We combine the stresses caused by a combined load. So we can do that for a single point like we did on the previous pages, but we can also plot that over an entire section, uh, which we've done here. And that, my friends, is it. That's all. We don't have any more lectures. Um, I can send you my like 151 lectures if you miss me, <laughs> keep you entertained. Um, but that's good. And we'll uh, basically just do some problems in class because this isn't anything new, right? All the combined loads is just using what we know to figure out more complex situations. All right, take care.